Okay, uh, let's continue with the talks. Um, just a reminder, there's a whiteboard down in the lobby with the lightning talks. You can still propose or vote for or whatever you like. There's a couple of interesting topics, so be sure to stop there. And we'll continue with the presentation about networking and OpenStack, I believe. Very well. Uh, can everybody, one, uh, everyone hear me? Sure? Cool. Very well. So this presentation, uh, as you could see on your schedule, is called Over the Neutral Integration. Uh, the title that you see here is slightly different. It's uh, something that sounds better in PR speech, let's say. Bring your virtualized networking stack to the next level. And that pre this presentation exactly was given by Mike Kolesnik uh, in FOSDEM uh, last week. Was Anybody here present uh, in FOSDEM for the presentation? No? Okay. You were there, yeah, cool. So we have one, so it, it will be the same, sorry. Uh, and my name is Antonio Sebra Poimedon. I work in, in overt networking, uh, not at, at, the, at the layer that does most of the integration, but we're gonna go through that. All right, so the agenda for today is to first to see how over does the network configuration, both for the infrastructure networks and uh, VM networks. Then see a bit what is Neutron. By the way, who knows what is Neutron? Show of hands. Oh, that's a pretty good thing. I will save myself some work. Uh, and then what are the benefits of the integration? How that is done? Uh, what is the model that we follow for that, etc. And finally, a note about how the integration should uh, evolve. Uh, of course, it's driven by the user, so if the users want something first, that, that comes first. All right, so how we do the configuration? We have this, this UI, uh, but like everything is available as well through a REST API for which we have py uh, Python and Java bindings. I think somebody was doing some Ruby bindings for those that, that dig Ruby. So a network is a logical entity. It's, uh, it represents a, a broadcast domain. And you, we have a tab inside the, inside the OBIRT. This is the, the administrator portal. And you can just define the network. And you can have your native ones, and then the ones that are received from some external entity. How do you create them? So you there was a button in the previous slide that said add or new, I think. Uh, I'm not a very, I'm not very fond of UIs, but I som sometimes I use it as well. Uh, and the, the important parts are the name, and then this part here that you say, okay, so my uh, network segmentation ID will be 1,500, uh, and then I want jumbo frames because there's a lot going on in, on my network. And then you can set QoS uh, at, the, at the host network level. Uh, since the new version, but actually that is not really working right now. We're working on that. Uh, there's some things that need to be done at, at the, at the libvirt level with some hooks or something. We will see about that. But you can still do QoS at the, at the VM NIC level. So, so it's quite powerful still for that. So how does it look? Once you create a network, you can go to the hosts and say, okay, so this, this host, I want to add networks to it. It has a certain amount of, of uh, physical interfaces, which you can see here. Uh, and here are the required and the non-required networks. Required networks means if uh, a network that you defined is required for that cluster, and you don't add it to the, to the host here, the host will not be able to start VMs. So all the ones that are here required, you better move here and they better go green, otherwise it's not gonna work. And you can drag and drop. It's as simple as that, drag and drop, or let's say you have 200 networks and dragging and drop 200 networks, it, it gets kind of boring. Uh, you can right click on them and then you get some context menu. You can say assign that to that specific NIC. Um, this is for the, 
VM nix. When, when you create a VM, uh, you tell it the name, and among other things that you can fill, like the console parameters and so on, you have here the, the nix. You can create as, as many nix as you'd like, and well, like until you would exhaust the PCI <laughs> addressing. Uh, and then you can say, okay, so this one is connected to the network blue and the profile blue. Uh, you can find different profiles for, for each uh, VM network and the profiles should typically have characteristics like uh, apply this QoS policy, like limit it to two megabits, something like that. Yeah, this is closer. <laughs> All right, so which, which are the, the benefits of integrating uh, overt uh, its network networking part uh, with neutron the benefit is that in in overt we center our efforts in the infrastructure networking uh, so setting up the bonds the the VLANs and so on for networks that are going to be used for display networks for storage for management like if you want to have it with spacewalks configured and uh, in that sense all that over provides neutron has it but maybe it's it's not the target of, of what, what it does the target is more on on a higher layer on providing stuff as a service on having um, well, we will we'll get into that. I don't want to spoil the, the, the following slides, but it, it allows you to set overlay networks and so on. And the good thing is that you can have them side by side in that previous tab, and every time you create a VM NIC, you say, okay, so I want to connect to this native network or to the Neutron one. So what is Neutron? Neutron is the networking specific uh, service of OpenStack, everybody familiar with OpenStack? Well, more or less. Okay, so OpenStack is mostly targeted at uh, solving the needs of making your own public or hybrid cloud, even private, if, if, if you really want to do that. I wouldn't. Uh, and yeah, everything in, in OpenStack is done, uh, split into small services that communicate through a Cupid bus at least in our, in our way. I don't know if you can use it with other buses. Probably, yeah. And it exposes a, a REST API. All the services have, have this nice API, which can't even be extended, as we will see. And then uh, the API can be implemented by plugins that are normally done either by the community or by some vendor, like you have here. Cisco are doing their own. These are community ones, etc. So yeah, there's the API with all the all the commands it should support. Then the plugin, uh, Neutron must be configured with a plugin. And once you have it configured with a single one, then you can say, okay, I have a Neutron service running. And then on each of the compute nodes, which is the uh, OpenStack speech for the hosts, that is how we call it, call them in in overt. Uh, they must run an agent. For each of the small services that Neutron can provide you, you need, you need an agent, and, and we'll take care of that. It's not a problem. Like, you don't need to go install them one by one if you don't want that. Um, yeah. So the, the key features are uh, the better network virtualization using overlay net networks. Everybody knows what overlay networks? Okay, so an overlay network is a network that runs on top of a network. It's very meta thing. So uh, basically, like you normally would be limited to the hardware network uh, on layer two, but if you want to expand that over all your infrastructure, let's say that you want to encapsulate your uh, network on uh, layer three networks, you would run something like uh, VXLAN and so which are the limitations of, of, the, of the VLAN uh, protocol? That you're limited to 4,096 uh, segments and, and that for a big cloud is, is kind of not enough. Like, let's say that we want to make money, we, we should have more than 4,096 uh, tenants, probably. 
Uh, and yeah, for maintaining it, you have to go into the switch, configure trans, and, and, and this and that, and well, it, it gets, if you have a big infrastructure, it can get bothering. So for the uh, overlay, like something like uh, VXLAN, you have 20 bits, uh, no, 24 bits, so that is two to the power of 24, something like 16 million uh, IDs that you have, and then for the for the unicast, it just goes point to point, and it can traverse your your layer three network normally, like it can go through the router nicely, and for the uh, broadcast, it just uses IP multicast groups, so so everything works fine, it doesn't flood your network. It, it, it's good, and it can be integrated with SDNs and stuff. Um, it, it can, yeah, if, if you have a big setup, like, you should probably go for that. IP address management, with which we integrate as well. Uh, the, the concepts, basic concepts are the network, uh, to, to the physical network to which you are connected, the subnet that you will offer to, to the machines, to the virtual machines, sorry, and, and the ports. And a port is like when you want to sign a VM VNIC to, to the subnet network, uh, you just say, okay, assign it a port, and then uh, under, under the wrapping, Libvirt will do click, will connect it for you, and the, the port will be assigned in Neutron to, to that VM, and uh, when it will be freed, so it returns to the pool, and so on. So security groups are a feature for security, obviously. Uh, it just, what it does, it segregates the, the VM. And what that allows you is like, you, well, how it's implemented right now, it's you create a, a bridge uh, and, and you apply some IP tables rules there so that you're sure that the traffic that doesn't belong there doesn't go through and each single port can be defined with a security group. We, we don't allow the management right now, uh, straight at least, uh, but, but you could probably get to use it. So how the integration works, how does that look like? Well, I didn't make this slide. Uh, I don't, I'm not entirely sure what this is meaning, uh, but if it were me, it would mean that I'm in trouble. Uh, all right, so what is an external provider? An external provider is uh, something, it, it's, a, it's a generic concept that we use for extending uh, overt. Like overt doesn't try to be everything, doesn't try to fit ev every solution, uh, at least not directly, and for using other pieces of the open source uh, stack that, that are very useful for everybody, we rely uh, on, on integration, which is, how things should work in the end. Uh, so basically, like if a service provides something that we need uh, and we can model it inside Overt, you can make a, a Java class that, that uh, extends the, the provider uh, interface and, and just well, then sends requests to the service and, and gets data back and then it, it gets modeled into the system and very, very easy examples that we have right now, as you can see here, it's a small, but this is a helmet. Uh, so it, there's a for, Foreman integration. Every host that you have inside your Foreman uh, installation, you could say, all right, make it available to, to, to over. That is not uh, like a blind, like make everything available because uh, it, it might be problematic if you use your Foreman for, for other stuff. So when you add it, you can, you can set filters, and then when you add a new host to the system, you can say, okay, instead of selecting one that I put your, the IP, uh, pull them from a provider and, and filter by that group in, in Foreman. And since we have the Foreman one, we also have the, the Glance one, and the Glance is, uh, uh, Glance is the storage uh, service of OpenStack, and you can say, okay, so this image I will pull from, uh, from Glance. So it, it, it allows sharing with OpenStack. Like you can have images defined in, or stored in, in Glance that you access uh, to, from, from Overt, 
uh, using Keystone, you authenticate against OpenStack. Uh, Keystone, for those that don't know it, is uh, like authentication as a service. Everything is as a service. Uh, you basically authenticate, give your credentials, you get a token, and then with that token, you can, you can access all the other services, and you can pull the images. You can, I think now we added support for uploading directly to Glance from Overt. And finally, the, the interesting one, or the one I should be, really be talking about, is the, the Neutron one. The Neutron one allows you to do two things. Uh, configure a network from Overt that will be backed up in, in uh, Neutron, or do the other way, like I said with Foreman. You could say, okay, list me the networks that I have in Neutron, and I decide which ones I want to connect to. So these are this, these two flows that I said. One is creating from over, the other is creating from neutron. Uh, I'll, I'll say that you could probably think, and why I, would I go with one? Why would I go with the other? All right, so the, 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 the solution at least, or how I think that it makes sense is if you are building uh, your hybrid public cloud and you have some networks that you want to inter interact or to be reachable from your private data center, uh, I would probably go with the neutron centric, define the stuff in neutron, uh, everything that is available in, in neutron, then you can configure straight into it and then you just pull them. If you don't have so many requirements, you just, for example, want to, to have the uh, IP uh, address management uh, from Neutron, but just receive it from Overt because we don't have such thing. Uh, we don't have any uh, DNS mask running in Overt. So in that case, you, you can create, as I will show, uh, the, the networks from, from Overt. So how to use it? Uh, it's simple. Uh, it could be probably simpler, but I, I would say that it's simple enough. If you already have OpenStack installed, fine. That, that, that you can you can already go ping to to here, but if not, like install Neutron, probably using Packstack or whatever is your your choice. Uh, somebody signals me maybe you shouldn't use Packstack, but no, Packstack works. We've tried it. Uh, then you add the Neutron instance uh, as an external provider. For that, you need the the Keystone credentials. Uh, then. Depending on, on what is your, your flavor, like if you want to create uh, the networks uh, in, in Overt, you do the, the first, if not, you do the second, and, and, and so forth. So, as I said, configure Keystone, uh, then adding as the provider, you, you tell it where is uh, Neutron running. So this example is from an all-in-one. You should also say which plugin you want. Uh, as I said before, Neutron works in, pl in plugins that take care of the configuration. We, at the moment, only support the Linux Bridge one and the uh, OpenBSwitch one. So that OpenBSwitch integration for, for Overt as well. Um, and then, yeah, here are the, the Keystone credentials. Uh, for the bus, for the agents, because uh, we can take care of the agents and the agents should be installed because without agents, nothing works. Uh, you, you give the credentials as well, and then when you add a network, like, let's export one, like, let's do it from, from the Overt side. So first we should say this network, by the way, you don't need to say exported or external or something, that is just because it makes it easier to see then from, from when you're listing networks. Uh, and you tell it, okay, this will be a, ne a, ne a Neutron uh, network, uh, and then you can configure the, the subnet that you will want to expose and, and the IP version. Uh, when you're going the other way around, as I said, go to Neutron, create networks, define the craziest thing that, that you're able to, to do or that empower, um, empowers more your setup. And then you just select the ones that you want. They, they go here in networks to import and then they will simply appear. 
So how do you install the agents? Very simple. When, if you are adding a new host, if the host is already added, it kind of is problematic. You should probably go and, and get the agents yourself. But if you're adding a new one, you can say, okay, uh, I'm gonna add uh, for the provider this. This is the, the bridge mappings, like which, um, which physical interface is connected to the network that, that, that will provide the connectivity. And uh, in the deployment uh, step of, uh, so when o in Overt, when you add a host, it goes to the machine and it just uses YAM uh, a lot to get everything that is needed, like installs VDSM, which is the hypervisor controller of, of Overt. It installs all the dependencies. It sends firewall uh, rules in IP tables. Uh, and in this case, it will also uh, handle the, the Asian installation, which is, it saves a lot of pain, I would say. Uh, and then when you create a, a new uh, VM NIC, it's simple. You just say, I want the NIC, and, but it will be backed by this external network. I, I would say it, could, it couldn't be easier. Um, when you run the, the machine, here, I cannot see it, but probably it's just external net. Uh, so what, what happens in the, in the background when, when you click run? So when you click run on the, on the background, uh, Overt will send uh, the create VM message to, to, to VDSM. VDSM uh, will receive that, and in the uh, XML, uh, definition of the, of the domain, of the VM, it will have uh, a custom device property. So for each device that you have in, in a VM, you can say, okay, so I need this parameter to, that might be used by some hooking point, by some extension. And for example, one to connect a, a NIC to a specific, uh, a VNIC, sorry, uh, into a specific uh, Libre network or you can say this VNIC should be backed by Cisco UCS. Uh, and in this case, you pass information such as which plugin uh, will back that. This is saved by Overt Engine. You don't have to, to tell it. As, as you could see here, uh, you don't need to say uh, the plugin or anything that is stored in, in the Overt Engine, but it will be passed on the creation step. And then uh, when the VNIC is being created, uh, VDSM has a, has a, a hook called uh, OpenStack uh, Net, I think. Uh, and what it does, it basically, if it's uh, OBS, it will just modify the, the XML, uh, the typical XML that with which you, uh, you create a normal VNIC so that uh, it, it tells Libbird basically to connect it to the integration bridge of, of OpenB switch. And if it's Linux bridges, uh, similar thing, it will set the target to the, to the bridge that it will create if, if it's not there. And if it uses security groups on top of that, it will create the security bridge if, if it is not there and set the, the VF to, for the connectivity to, to go through uh, to the integration bridge. So what is missing uh, or future work? It's just another way of telling it. What is missing is as you could see, what, what I allowed to set up uh, or what we allowed to set up is uh, just the, the segmentation ID and, and the, the name, of, obviously, but the, the IP management. So Neutron allows you to do much more than that, but it's not visible from over. And we'd like that you would not really need to, to learn to interfaces, to learn to talk to the REST API of, of Neutron if you don't really need to. So integrating with, I don't know, with load balancing as a service, routing as a service, uh, extending uh, the, the tabs of network creation so that they would reflect that would be definitely a good thing to do. So that covers the first step. Uh, improve the VM scheduling. Uh, yeah, this is, this is kind of a, an important point. Uh, nowadays, we don't detect uh, before scheduling a, a VM to be started on a host, if that host can access that network. That would 
be possible to do now with extensions uh, to the scheduler. Uh, Obert has a scheduler that is coded in Java, but it has extensions in, in Python. And you could tell it, okay, so if I want to start a VM that needs uh, these neutral networks, just do this to ensure that, that which hosts have that uh, present or which machines are uh, on a Cisco 